okay so now uh, we will discuss on the outer planets yes yeah I'm excited do you have some have you read on some of the outer planets <laughs> i better not say anything <laughs> oh is it so is it is it a touchy subject well uh, in my experience what i have seen in vedic astrology i mean the people who have been practicing they are like oh yeah some westerners use it and it's like we also want to use it but we don't know where to use and like the another problem i feel is in internet you go to websites they they have the same copy material like one website will copy from another, another website and paste it yeah it's like we need some will, source yeah. and i think i'll give you some for that <laughs> i'll give you some some you know to you know books that you could read would be better um so first let me say that um i of course learned western astrology first and in western astrology uranus neptune and pluto have they're they're very very important they are much more powerful than jupiter or saturn Jupiter and Saturn were the outer planets. They have the strongest impact. But when Uranus, Neptune and Pluto came along, they have a stronger impact than Jupiter and Saturn and Rahu. Um so when I started with Hindu Vedic astrology, I I didn't use the those planets, but I when I would do a horoscope, I would I would look at the western horoscope it would give me a certain amount of information and then i would look at the hindu vedic which would also give me in <laughs> information so i would use the western system keep it with its integrity and if i was doing a reading which is mostly a hindu vedic astrology reading but if i saw that uranus was about to hit somebody's 10th house cusp i know they're going to have a career change or strong desires for a career change. If Uranus hits the marriage house, I know there's going to be changes in the marriage. Changes in the behavior or, you know, an actual change. In fact, Uranus is the planet that is best used to rectify a chart. If you are looking now in the western horoscope, we have what are called the angles. We have a western chart which is the the round oh well yeah hold on one second in the western we have this is the round chart and the angles are called this is the first house and that's an angle this is the fourth uh where this is the fourth house over here that's land homes real estate this is the 7th house cusp and this up here is the 10th house cusp and if a planet those are called the angles of a chart in the hindu you don't have that so much you have the you have the ascendant degree is the angle and the that same degree in the 7th house would be the the 7th house angle you don't really have the 4th and 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 10th we do but if you notice a planet hitting the ascendant degree or the opposite of the ascendant degree the 7th house if it's uranus neptune or pluto you're going to notice effects and that's why it's a very easy out of all the outer planets uranus is the planet of change so for example i was <coughs> i was married in my first marriage i was 25 years old and i went to an astrologer western astrologer in 78 77 78 whatever it was and she said oh you're going to have a she she saw uranus was about to hit the marriage house cusp and she said you're going to have a retesting of your marriage because uranus breaks things up if it hits the money house it it breaks up the money and changes it if it hits the career house it breaks it up and changes it so you know i didn't know any astrology then but my marriage exploded when when uranus hit she said in two months a retesting my wife was a, an actress and she fell in love with her director this was some retesting 
So Uranus, now it's not that every time Uranus hits, it does that, but you can expect a change. She used the words retesting, some changes going on. This was a severe change, okay? So I, when I do horoscopes, I also use the, the, these Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto because if you don't, you miss an awful lot of information. So I don't, I don't actually say, oh, I look at it in the Hindu chart. Because I've got it from the Western, and I don't want to offend anybody. But the truth is, after about 35 years, 30, 35 years, I started looking at it in the Hindu horoscope. And the way, I really didn't need to do that because I have it in the Western. But the way that I would use it was, was that if the person was coming to a dasha, a dasha of a planet, Jupiter, Venus, moon, whatever. If that Venus or moon or, you know, Saturn was conjunct or aspected tightly by Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, the dasha is not going to be as you expect it to be. It's going to be influenced by these outer planets. So you can use them or not use them. It's up to you. But I will just give you, you know, information for you to be able to think about. Okay. So <clears throat> Uranus is the planet of change. When Uranus was discovered, electricity, we got electricity. So Uranus is a planet of electricity. It's a planet of things that are ahead of the times. Astrology is ruled by Uranus. It's ahead of the times even though it, it's also ancient, it's kind of advanced in the Western world. Um, so Uranus represents change, sudden, Uranus is sudden change. Just when Uranus would hit a planet by transit, very, very sudden. Now in the Western system, when we use transits, we mean when the planet comes along and hits to the exact degree, that's when you're gonna see the big effects in a transit. So Uranus hits the degree of the ascendant, and then you have these big effects. Unless the ascendant is wrong, if the birth time is wrong, it may take a little bit longer, and that's how you rectify the chart. But Uranus represents change, electricity, upheaval, instability, instability, and it represents things that are ahead of the times, and it represents independence independence it's very independent so if a person donald trump has has uranus <clears throat> in his hindu chart uranus is 24 degrees and the sun is 29 degrees that's a five degree aspect so with the sun with uranus he's going to do things he's going to be completely independent He's not going to care what other people think. He's going to be stubborn and do it his way. So, so that's the planet Uranus. So we'll go through in the houses, okay? If Uranus is in the first house, the purse and the closer to the ascendant, the stronger the Uranus impact would be. If Uranus is in the first house, the person is independent. They are different. They do not care what other people think. They're going to do things their own way. They're going to be inventive. They can invent things. They can invent things because they don't care that other people say, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. They don't even think like that. They don't care about the rules and regulations. They're going to break the rules and regulations to do what they want to do. So they invent things. They're very inventive. If Uranus is afflicted, meaning it's in bad aspect with other planets, that's more from the that's more from the Western system. And if you read this book, you'll get an idea of what I mean by afflicted. If Uranus is square or opposite with the sun, moon, or other planets, the person's going to be independent, but very defensive. Because they're, they're very independent, but, but they're always defending themselves, and they're defensive, and, um, and they're erratic, and they're up and down, and they're unstable. If you're, so the positive would be independent, free thinking, and very inventive. The negative would be unstable, unreliable, 
and uh, defensive. If Uranus is in the second house, that's the house of money. So a person with Uranus in the second house, the money can go way up and it can go way down. They're going to take risks. I have Uranus in the second house. And when I invest in gold and silver stocks, I, I, I don't mind gambling. I don't mind, I don't mind the risk. I don't mind if it goes way up and way down. I don't mind that. My wife also has Uranus in the second house. So she, she doesn't care either. She said, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. So it goes up and down. Okay. Um, if Uranus is in the second house, you could make money by inventing things, by doing things that have never been done before. The second house in the Western system is also the, not only it's money, which is value, but it's also your self value. So your feelings about how valuable you are, if Uranus is in the second house, it keeps changing. Sometimes you feel really valuable and other times you feel like you're worthless because Uranus is there and it creates ups and downs. If Uranus is in the third house, now in the, in the Western system, the third house is the mind in the Western. So in that system, if a person has Uranus in the third house, they are extremely independent minded. Uranus in the first house makes the person independent. The third house is independent in the mind. And they are completely beyond the five senses. They don't care about, you know, they, they, if Uranus is in the third house, then they believe in things that are beyond the five senses, intuition and psychic, etc. So if Uranus is in the third house with brothers and sisters, it's not good. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all malefics. They are the outer planets. They are all malefics. However, even though they're malefics by nature, they they also carry the greatest weight. They are much more powerful than Jupiter and Saturn. So when they are operating in a positive way, the results you get are enormous, enormous from any of them. And these are, they're all, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all psychic planets. A person who is psychic because of Uranus, Uranus is very sudden. So they, you know, they just, suddenly get a thought and it's psychic like that. Neptune is more of a feeling planet. So the person is psychic because they feel, they feel what's going to happen like that. And Pluto is another psychic planet as well, but Pluto is more like, it's kind of like Neptune in the sense that you're, you're, you're going very deep into something with Pluto, the psychic energy is very healing and powerful and deep, but I'll come to that in a minute. Uranus in the fourth house. Any of these malefics in the fourth house are very rough because the fourth house is mother. So if Uranus is in the fourth house, you have no control over your mother. The mother is in unstable. The mother is up and down. Now the mother could also be a genius. See, these are malefics, but they're so powerful they can go either way, but when you first see them in a, in a house of a horoscope, you have to assume trouble, okay? Now, with the Western horoscope, see, this is complicated because if you're using them in the Hindu system, you have no way to know whether Uranus is well-disposed or average or badly disposed. In the Western system, if Uranus is in the fourth house unaspected, the mother might be a genius, she might be unstable, she might be erratic. But if Uranus is square to Saturn, square to Mars, opposite Pluto, the mother could be completely crazy. But you don't, we don't have those kinds of aspects in the Hindu system. It might be more, more, more difficult to say. Anyway, um, you could always use Jupiter. If Jupiter is throwing an aspect onto Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, that would be wonderful. That would be a good aspect. Um, Uranus in the fourth house means unstable with homes. It, it doesn't mean bad. It just means you could move around a lot. The person moves around. They have a lot of houses. They move, they move, they move. The home space isn't stable. So that's why Uranus in the fourth house is very difficult because 
you want stability from your mother, you're not getting it if it's in the fourth house. She might be exciting, she might be brilliant, but stability you're not getting. Uranus in the fifth house means the the extreme creativity. Now in the Hindu system, that would mean the mind is very, very creative and independent and genius, but it would also be a desire to invest and speculate. Children would be brilliant, but they could be erratic. They could be changeable. They would not be stable. Children wouldn't be solid and stable. They'd be more genius or crazy or up and down. Uranus is, you know, these intense, sudden experiences. And Uranus is everything outside of rules and regulations. Uranus in the sixth house, you would, you would absolutely need freedom in the workplace. If you had Uranus, the planet of independence and impatience, Uranus is a planet of impatience and restlessness and ups and downs and changes. So if it's in the sixth house, you would be tortured if you had a job where you had to do the same thing over and over. You would be tortured if you had a job where you had to listen to the boss all the time. It would be torture. Um, you'd need freedom. At the same time, Uranus in the sixth house, you could be very, very brilliant with herbs, Ayurveda, healthcare systems. You could be very creative, knowing things outside the norm like that. But mostly the sixth house would be the workplace and health. Uranus in the sixth would not be good for health. And if Uranus was afflicted in the sixth house, you would have palpitations. Uranus causes sudden spasms, like that, spasms. Um, the Uranus in the seventh house is a very, very interesting placement. Uranus is the planet of independence, no rules and regulations. If it sits in the marriage house, wherever Uranus is in your horoscope, you are going to be independent. So when it comes to money, I'm very independent with it. I spend it, I make it, I spend it. It's, I'm independent. With, I, I don't have a lot of rules and regulations about it. Okay. So wherever Uranus is, that's where you assert your independence. So if Uranus is in the marriage house, you must have complete independence and freedom within the marriage. This is very difficult for people. Marriage means compromise. There's, where's the compromise going to be if you're being independent? Okay, so if you have Uranus in the seventh house and you have a partner that is jealous and possessive, it will not last. It'll be over fast. That would be torture. The, there has to be freedom and independence. If you have Uranus in the seventh house, you're going to be attracted to partners that are unstable brilliant, ahead of the times, independent, stubborn, want their own way. That's what you'd be attracted to. Now, the difficulty with Uranus in the seventh house is that the person knows that they have to have freedom in marriage. Marriage doesn't usually entail a lot of freedom. Marriage means you have to come home, you have to be with the wife and the family, you have to do certain things. So this is very difficult for people because they know intuitively they don't want to be smothered and they don't want to be possessed. Now, if the person is able to say, I want freedom, I want a marriage, but I want to be free to travel. I want to be free to do the things I want to do. I want freedom within the marriage. If they do that, they can have a good relationship. But most people can't even conceive of saying that. They cannot, they don't think it's possible to say, I want a partner where there's a lot of freedom. They won't even say it. So what they do is they go after partners that are married. If you go after someone who's married, you won't be smothered. You won't get jealousy. You won't be possessed and you'll have your freedom but you'll never have 
intimacy either. Or they go after a person who they love, but the person is incapable of commitment. Now, they don't do this on purpose, but their subconscious, when it looks for relationship, they know I can't have that person because that person's going to love me and hold on, and they can't tolerate that. They need freedom and independence. Okay? So you have to explain to the person, go, it's okay to have freedom in a marriage. You just have to find a partner that is similar. Okay? That's basically Uranus in the marriage house. Uranus in the eighth house. The eighth house is astrology and metaphysical subjects. And Uranus in that house is usually good for things like that, like astrology, metaphysics, astral travel, interest in life after death, things like that. Uranus in the ninth house is your typical new age student, new age seeker. So in the United States, around the 1970s, all the spiritual Indian meditation movements came to the West and people started getting into that. A person who has Uranus, which is independence and freedom and restlessness and doesn't want tradition, Uranus is the opposite of Saturn. Saturn is traditional, Uranus is untraditional, Anything, you know, anything that breaks the rules and regulations is fine. If a person has Uranus in the seventh house, the, you know, it's so for them, they could be bisexual, they could be homosexual. It doesn't matter. The rules go out the window. So if a person has Uranus in the ninth house, then their religion is not traditional. You may be raised Jewish, but you may become a Hindu. You may go, go into Eastern meditation. Uh, or they could be a Christian, but Uranus is in the ninth house. They're going to want to go way beyond those ordinary religions. They're going to want more exotic, new age religion. The Uranus in the ninth house also means a lot of travel, because the ninth house is unstable and up and down and changes like that. And the transits are the same. If Uranus goes into the marriage house, then the marriage goes through changes and excitement, you know. Uranus goes into the ninth house, suddenly the person opens up to new religions. Uranus going into the 10th, or Uranus natally in the 10th house means the career has to have independence and freedom and be ahead of the times. So you will often find astrologers to have Uranus in the 10th house. I don't have Uranus in the 10th, I have Aquarius. Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So Saturn rules Capricorn and Saturn rules Aquarius in the ancient system. But in the modern system, Saturn rules Capricorn. Saturn is a co-ruler of Aquarius, but the main ruler would be Uranus. So I have Uranus on the career 10th house cusp of the, uh, the, the Western system. Okay. It's uh, actually Uran uh, Aquarius is also my 10th house in the Hindu as well. So if Uranus is in the 10th house, the person may have numerous careers, unstable, numerous careers. They have a career that is ahead of the times, that breaks all the rules, that gives them freedom. If they don't have freedom and they've got Uranus in the 10th house, that would be torture. They should have freedom to do what they want to do. And they will. They won't listen to their parents. They won't listen to the rules and regulations. And the career could have ups and downs as well. Okay. Uranus in the 11th house would mean that you have friends that are spiritual, mystical, ahead of the times, restless, brilliant. On the negative, they could be unstable, up and down, up and down, changing like that. And you would, you would enjoy friends that are metaphysical and spiritual and different and weird. They don't have to be spiritual and metaphysical. They could just be weird and strange and out of the ordinary, different. That's Uranus. Uranus has no rules, no regulations. It wobbles. The planet wobbles like. Um, the Uranus in the 12th house, the 12th house in the Western system is more the subconscious mind. Um, so 
it might have some, it definitely has to do with enlightenment as well. In the Hindu system, it's moksha. So Uranus in the 12th house would be an interest in moksha, interest in enlightenment. From the Western point of view, there'd be a lot going on in the subconscious mind. The, you know, the person's, you know, the person is, you know, functioning in the world, but there's a lot of stuff going on in, in, in their mind that makes them, gives them troubles, usually, things like that. Any questions about Uranus? Okay. 